So there's a lot of work to do as far as getting these trenches ready. I'm doing it as a shared trench system, uh, which means there's a trench within the trench. That basically means that I have to dig 60 centimetres down to accommodate the electrical line. That's then covered up with a little bit of soil and then there's a warning tape put over the top of that to indicate that there's an electrical line below it. From there, I add a bit more soil to it so there's about 15 to 20 centimetres of soil coverage on it so that I can then lay down my data cable, which is essentially the phone line and internet cable connection. And then at the 30 centimetre level is where the sewer pipe goes in. Unfortunately, there's just not enough room to bring in a bobcat or any heavy trenching equipment and the nature of the soil doesn't really lend itself to those smaller machines, which means I'm really left with no other option but to dig this all out by hand. Essentially what I did was to dig out the bulk of the trench line and then work out the details of the connection at either end once the trench was essentially completed and I'd worked out the pitch and line I needed to follow. Knowing roughly where the sewer line was in the original house, uh, I was able to use a metal probe to poke down through the soil to find where the clay pipe is. And with a fair bit of work and digging and exploring around, I was able to find that original line and we've been able to splice in a new section that allows for the new house to tap into it without inhibiting the flow of the original line. Now that I've got the pitch worked out, everything's joined up, the pipes are all glued down and positioned in place, I can now start backfilling this trench and get the yard back to some degree of normality. The thinner 50mm pipe you can see there with the hose coming out of it is actually something that I'm using as a protective sheath that goes around the building to protect that hose. The, the soil itself has got some small gravelly components in it uh, that over time may work in such a way to puncture that hose. So I've basically dropped that 50 mil line all the way around, uh, made up a custom corner so that it can be, goes around the corner there, uh, continues through. You can see here where I've already started to bury it. And then it comes out to the back of my workshop uh, where I'm going to connect the water main to. Uh, once again, it's set up in such a way that it's got a cap on the end so that soil doesn't migrate down the end of the pipe. And that means that should there ever be an issue with that line, I don't have to uncover it at either end of the pipe, pop off the caps there and then I can feed a completely new hose down that pathway. Apart from the soil condition, the other reason why I'm doing that is eventually at the front of the building there's going to be a deck area uh, and it means that once again if there's ever an issue I don't have to tear up the entire deck to get to it. To say I've been busy over the last month or so is a bit of an understatement. I've had all the trenching that needs to be done. I've started rebuilding boardwalk areas and fixing up clotheslines. Whilst the plan was to get the granny flat finished by the end of the year, we had a major setback which sort of slowed things down a little bit. There was a design issue that had to be reassessed regarding the position of the water tank, which set me back quite a bit. Initially, the architect drew it being at the back of the building. I questioned that at the time as not being really where it should be given that the slant of the roof ran the other way. I sort of let it slide at the time thinking that um, putting it in a different position wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but things being what they are, these things are always a big deal apparently. Long story short, it slowed me down about a month. As suspected, I had to reposition the water tank to accommodate for that slope in the roof, uh, which means I've put it over near my workshop. And that meant that some of the trenches that I dug for the initial connection and drainage uh, had to be redug to accommodate the new position of the water tank. And that obviously slowed me down quite a bit. It's all pretty much been done now, connected properly. Uh, it's got an internal electric pump that detects the drop in water pressure when the tap's turned on and just supplies water to the house. Uh, it's only really providing water for the toilet and the washing machine, so it's not a big deal anyway. Uh, and it'll also have an external tap. Beyond that, I was just about ready to go as far as the final finishing and assembly of the kitchen area. Uh, you can see here that it's basically ready for a final sand and painting. But because of that water issue, I had to cut out a section of the wall to install an entirely new pipe to accommodate that uh, washing machine attachment, which is at that end, and the toilet attachment, which is at the other end. I did it on this side so I didn't have to mess around with the waterproofing, which had already been done in the bathroom and the laundry area. You can see in that laundry section there, and down there where the toilet's going to connect in that other corner there where those new spricket connections come out I'll have to go around and re-waterproof those sections but at least it means I don't have to do the entire bathroom because I have to tear a hole in the wall same goes for that laundry section you can see that there's three taps there one is hot, one is cold and one is the tank water in a perfect world I would have had that set up so that the, uh, the cold tap was purely just from the tank to begin with but in terms of long-term solution, I kind of like this idea anyway, because it gives me a genuine backup should I ever have any issues with the tank. So apart from that setback, the entire house now has been plastered and joined. Uh, it still needs to have the final sand and final finish put on it, but it's not far away from being ready to paint. 
Uh, as I said, the entire thing set me back about a month, which unfortunately means I've missed the cutoff date for actually being able to get it finished for this year because the certifiers and that sort of stuff have shut down for the end of the year and don't come back until about the 15th of January. So as a result, I've sort of slowed down my pace a little bit just to take a bit of a breather so that I can get it all finished in a more leisurely pace. I've got the pile of tiles that you can see there that are going to go into the bathroom. And once I fix that little bit around the tap, I can start installing all those. And then I can start working out the rest of the final details in terms of getting this place finished up. So it's been a pretty hectic couple of months, but things are coming together, even if it's been a bit slower than I wanted it to be. So it's pretty likely that this will be my last video for this year. So I hope all you guys have a safe and Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.